Brothers and sisters, I want to talk today about the necessity of victory gardens. They're not, they're no more a luxury. They're much more than an avocation or a hobby. They are necessary in this world, just like they were necessary during the Second World War. The federal government is spending over eight trillion dollars a year and collecting three and a half trillion. <laughs> this means that the Treasury can only service its existing debt by adding on more and more new debt. In other words, the federal government is flat broke. The government is holding its finances together with printing press money. And the more it prints, the worse the next crisis will be. And they've gone so far down the road now that they've got to keep the money flowing no matter what. It's either inflate or die. The only thing that prevents this house of cards from imploding are zero interest rates and printing press money. And therefore, the Fed cannot fight infl uh, inflation despite its, uh, all its talk because the way to fight inflation is to raise interest rates, to cool things down. But if they do that, that would collapse the, bu the bubble on Wall Street with certainty. With certainty, inflation, inflation is on the way. Look at the price of gas. Just around the corner is $4 a gallon. There's no question but that the value of the dollar will collapse. Cryptocurrencies will collapse. Gold is going to soar and there's a possibility of hyperinflation. What this means in social terms, is that the middle class is vanishing. This country is becoming more and more polarized. With the wealth of the one-tenth of one percent, one-tenth of one percent at the top, growing apace, they own as much as the bottom 90%. The gap between rich and poor of this magnitude is without precedent in American history. And therefore we say, brothers and sisters, in the face of the coming collapse, we say, get growing, America. This spring, plant a victory garden, just as your forebears did in the midst of the Second World War. And I understand that over 40% of the vegetables consumed during, in 1943, were grown in people's backyard gardens. So, let's go ahead then. Let's plant a victory garden. We'll begin with romaine lettuce. Here's a wonderful romaine, an heirloom variety called Winter Density. 
It's an heirloom English variety. It makes a magnificent dark green crisp head. And here's another romaine lettuce. And this is called this is called Rouge de Vire or a red winter lettuce. It's from France, but of course, Rouge de Vire, magnificent red romaine. And we plant this lettuce because we are told that in just four years, 50% of Americans will be obese. And in just nine years from now, this will jump to 60%. That's right, by 2030, 60% of, Amer of Americans will be obese. Let's go on and let's plant a, 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 a blue curled scotch kale. Kale, as all agree, is one of the most nutritious of vegetables. And we plant this kale because because ultra-processed foods make up over 60% of the American diet. Let's go on to plant some Swiss chard. And we're planting some char Swiss chard. This is uh, a ch chard called Charbel is from Johnny Selected Seeds in Maine, a wonderful company. And we're planting this Swiss chard because the rates of depression, anxiety, and suicide are currently at an all-time high. And this is especially tragic among young people, just at the start of life. Imagine giving way to depression in your teens. We plant Tomatoes. Next, this is a wonderful variety of grape tomato. It's vigorous and prolific. It's from Baker Creek Seed Company, another magnificent company devoted to heirloom varieties, preserving our heritage. And um, this tomato is prolific and vigorous. And we plant tomatoes because diabetes has reached epidemic proportions worldwide. One third of Americans, 115 million, are either pre-diabetic or diabetic. We plant spinach because the U.S. has the highest rates of cancer and little or nothing is being done as far as prevention. Finally, we plant mustard greens in the hope that you will get together with neighbors and friends and plan and plant a community garden and an edible schoolyard. So mustard greens 
uh, very hardy, very vigorous indeed. Wonderful, wondrous, just wondrous for salads. So that's the beginning of a garden for spring. And as soon as we, uh, as soon as we get this flat home, we're going to water it, of course, and then cover it with a plastic cloth and put it in a warm place maybe a south-facing window, and water it, give it one deep watering every day. Cover, take off the cover, water it, and then cover it back over again so that it stays moist. And within less than a week, you'll have wondrous germination. Keep them warm, of course. And I want to say, brothers and sisters, there's so much help for you out there. YouTube is replete with excellent videos showing you step by step how to go about creating a vegetable garden, a magnificent garden in your backyard or even your front yard, if you wish. Uh, there's so much help out there, so many, so much advice, so much help, so many excellent seeds companies like Baker's Creek, Heirloom Seeds, Johnny Selected Seeds, Pine Tree Garden Seeds, the Seed Savers Exchange, so much help, so many people who are willing to share decades of experience with you. All you've got to do is meet them halfway and ask. This is a necessity. It's no longer a luxury or a hobby. There's no question but that we are on the brink of an economic catastrophe. And yet I know you will pull us through as you did during the Great Depression. Imagine 1933 with 25% unemployment, yet you came through. Imagine 1942 and 1943 with the entire world aflame in war. And you landed in D-Day and pulled us through. It's no longer a question of sustainability. It's no longer a matter of renewal or even regeneration. The word now is redemption. You will bring us through you will bring about the new birth of freedom that Abraham Lincoln prophesied. Thank you, brothers and sisters. It is a privilege to share with you. Let us go forward.